Hello and welcome to Bradio Software Development. My name is Brad and in this mini series we're going to be talking about microservices. This is part A and we're just going to be doing a high level overview of what microservices are, why you would use them, the different types of service buses that there are that you can use um, and also uh, why it's a good thing because it's a completely different way of doing things. Uh, normally you would have like API calls talking to different services but in this instance we just have literally a queue you put messages on the queue and another services read off that and it's a much better approach to managing larger scale applications and uh, we'll explain more in the video. So without further ado, let's get straight into the terminals. Now before I get started in the video I just wanted to explain that there is a website called microservices.io so if there's anything that I don't cover or anything that I explain correctly you can always come to this website and have a look for yourself and see what microservices are about. Uh, a lot of people like to actually read, it, read documentation themselves and that's fair enough so this is the link for that. Um, but in my words, <laughs> so this is what I came up with for microservices. So what are microservices? Microservices are essentially a way of splitting out a system. So normally, traditionally, you'd have like a monolith system. So you'd have a bunch of services all in one repo, um, and you would rely on those services in order to build your system. The problem with that is when it becomes very complicated and you have many developers working on a project, people tend to trip over themselves. So you get you get things like more merge conflicts. You get things like you have to wait on other developers to finish a bit of code before you can do your own work. Um, but with the beauty of microservices, you can split that whole system up into different fragments and you can have one team of maybe two or three people working on one service, another team of two to three people working on another service, so on and so on and so on. Um, so the idea of microservices is that each service is in charge of its own data and each service is in charge of telling the other services um, what data has changed. So in this example here, um, I probably should have called this one microservice A and then maybe this one B and this one C. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's just semantics. So microservice B might be a fetch service. So it might be connect to some kind of Wikipedia or like a database somewhere externally outside of your system. And what microservice B is doing is it's getting all of the data about animals and countries. And it's saying, I we have this new data and we need to uh, update the other microservices to tell them some data has changed. So what it would do is it would grab the data from an external source and it would put it on the RabbitMQ um, called an event and it would have a payload of this data. Now, if we come over to the left-hand side, we have microservice A and microservice C. Now, microservice A doesn't care about countries. It only cares about animals. So when it reads this payload that's on the queue, it will only uh, recognize the animal's data and it would store it in its own database and manage its own data. So if there's like a UI connected to it and it needs to get a list of all the animals to... I don't know, um, update the different type of medications that that animal was meant to have or whatever, then it can use that in microservice A. And it's exactly the same for microservice C. So microservice C might only be in charge of managing countries. The beauty of this is that I've worked in teams before where you have uh, a, a dependency on other developers. And it's, it's no fault of the developers because when a system gets too big, it does get more complicated. And what happens is... If one group of developers needs some information or uh, a function from another service, you have to wait for them to develop it first. But in this case, all we need to do is basically agree on the data structure that's going to be on the payload, and then you give it to the team and go, look, we're going to do everything our end in our service, and this is what we're going to put onto the queue, and this is the name of the event. Okay, so I've just added some more text to the screen here. If you look at these two here, these these could be events. So when the data gets fetched from the internet, it will update the data for animals and the data for countries and put it on the bus. And it will give the heading countries updated and animals updated. They could be two separate events or you could just have one called data updated. It's completely up to you. And then the microservices that care about animals being updated will listen to this event and then it will do everything that it needs to do and the same for countries and then it also works the other way around so say microservice c wants to update 
um, data within a country. Say they want to update, I don't know, the temperature of a country at any given date because microservice C is in charge of that, then it will tell microservice B to update its data store to store that, that data. So that's just my um, introduction to microservices. Sorry if it's a bit crap. Um, but again, you can go to microservices.io if you want to learn a bit more about it. Now, uh, for the sake of this mini series, what we're going to be using is uh, RabbitMQ. Let's open up Rabbit. So, RabbitMQ is just one that I'm familiar with. Uh, I've also used Kafka and I've also used um, MQTT. And I think that's it from the NestJS supported uh, queue systems. Um, RabbitMQ is really easy to set up. There's a Docker Hub image for it. You can literally just type it in the terminal and it runs. Um, it's just really easy and it's got a nice management UI as well. So you can see all the payloads and all of the requests coming through, which is quite nice. And it's also supported natively by NestJS. So as you can see here, this looks very similar to the diagram that I just showed, uh, except it's a bit more of a simplified version. And it's shown as a TCP socket going over that on the microservice, um, the microservice message bus. So hopefully I'll explain that fairly okay. Um, I'm not very good at explaining things sometimes, but hopefully I'll get better with that. So thanks for watching part A of my microservices mini series. Uh, I'll be releasing the next video in a couple of days, so stay tuned for that. And hopefully you'll like the next one as well. So remember to like, comment and subscribe. Um, it really helps out me and I want to try and hit 500 subs by the end of June, I think my target is. And I'm currently on 130 something. So uh, I'm really going to try and push out some videos over the next few months to try and get that subscriber uh, goal. Um, so yeah, um, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.